Right, hi, this is Mahabeli from the American University in Cairo, and with me is Rami. Rami, take it away. Good. Uh, well, I should say greetings, everyone. Good morning, good evening, wherever you happen to be or whenever you happen to be watching. My name is Rami Khalir. I'm an assistant professor of learning, design, and technology at the University of Colorado in Denver. Um, and I am pleased and really honored to join Maha and others to learn a little bit about a community building activity that can happen in an online space. It can happen in a face-to-face -face classroom. It can happen in a hybrid classroom. It can really happen anywhere. And the activity that builds community is the annotation of your course syllabus. And annotation is the addition of a note to a text. And I'm inviting faculty and educators and students to annotate their course syllabi. And this is a great thing to do to build community at the beginning or even in the middle or towards the end of the semester. Syllabi are texts and they're important texts. They're texts, of course, that everyone should read. And yet they often raise questions or they highlight perhaps concerns or opportunities to even co-design a class or even to perhaps build community around discussing what's going to happen on a learning adventure throughout the course of the semester. And so annotating a course syllabus is a lovely way to build again community perhaps at the beginning of the semester. So let's say your syllabus is a PDF. Maybe your syllabus is a Google Doc. Maybe your syllabus in a physical classroom is actually printed out and put on poster paper all around the classroom walls. The form of your syllabus document, the form of that text, really could be anything. Your syllabus could be a blog post. Again, however you've authored your syllabus, I'm inviting you to annotate that document with your students. And this will allow your students, for example, to ask questions, to share their initial thoughts or even confusions about assignments, to inquire about course policies, to perhaps share strategies among students, to even introduce themselves. If you annotate a course syllabus in the middle of the semester, you can do so as a way of kind of checking in on the progress of the course, perhaps even providing feedback to a professor or educator about the effectiveness of particular assignments. Again, you could annotate a course syllabus at the end of the semester as a reflective opportunity to say, like, how did this learning opportunity like, how was the experience for you? What did you think that you learned? What could have, again, be improved? Again, these annotation approaches to syllabus documents can happen at any time, and they can also happen with all kinds of technology. Again, if you have your syllabus as a PDF, you could annotate it using the social annotation tool hypothesis. If your syllabus is a Google Doc, you could annotate that using the Google Doc comments. If your syllabus is a blog post, you could annotate it using the commenting feature, or again, also something like Hypothesis. And when classes can meet face-to-face uh, -face physically, I've certainly seen and also worked with educators who literally print out large poster size copies of their syllabus, paste them all around the classroom, and then have students walk around and share markers and write on the syllabus. And so again, whether this is the first week of the semester, or it's the 10th week of the semester, or it's the last week of the semester, inviting your students to share their voice, to forward their questions, to dialogue with one another and with you, the professor or the educator, is a really powerful way to build community in an informal way through a social practice of annotation that people are likely already familiar with and that centers the content of your course and the syllabus in an interactive and in an inviting way. We'll share some blog posts that describe this process alongside this video. You can look at those blog posts for examples from other educators for some key strategies about how I've used this in my class. And again, I hope that wherever your class lives online or in a hybrid configuration and where whatever kind of text your syllabus happens to be, that you and your students annotate it. I love it, Ramey. Thank you. And I, I also love the fact that you're talking about doing it different times in the semester because I, I always thought you just did it at the beginning of the semester. And I realize, of course, students at the beginning don't really know what to expect. So they may not be asking the right questions. Like doing it in the middle as a way to get feedback is great. Because I usually yeah. get feedback from them. They've forgotten like everything we've done. So going back sure. to the syllabus, if it has those details or adding in, sometimes the things that students value are different than the things we think. And they might not be written in the syllabus. So they might actually add in stuff that we don't expect as well. 
That's, that's absolutely right, Maha. And I, I use this often, maybe halfway through the, through the semester to begin revising readings, for example. Yeah. So maybe halfway through the semester, students have a clear idea of what kinds of readings really resonate with them, what kinds of readings we actually might not want to explore, mm -hmm. and what other authors, voices, and perspectives we really need to bring into the class because we've built that foundation. And so we'll revisit the syllabus six, seven, eight weeks into the class, and we'll say, here was the kind of first draft in the syllabus of what our readings were going to look like in the second half of class, now add some annotation, you know, let's cut this, let's add that, what do you think about this? And we use that as a way of kind of redesigning the second half of our class when it comes to our course readings. There are so many different ways that you can use this uh, annotation strategy to again build community, elicit feedback, strengthen peer-to-peer -peer connections, yeah. really at any point in time in the semester. And question authority. Question the authority well, of the teacher, if, yeah. if you, depending on the prompt you give them, right? That's, that's a whole, I think, other really important aspect of this, which is that this is really a way of decentering authority and suggesting to a community of learners that the professor's vision of what learning might look like is not necessarily going to be what will happen, and mm -hmm. that I want to invite my students to co-design with me. And for all kinds of reasons concerning personal privilege and power and my mm -hmm. own ethos as an educator, I think it's important to really try and find ways of moving my authority into less central spaces within the kind of administrative realm of a class. And the annotation of a course syllabus does suggest that students can quote, speak truth to power. If mm -hmm. as a pr professor, I hold certain power, mm -hmm. then if I'm inviting my students to remark upon, to speak back to, to comment on my design, that is a move which, again, decenters um, my centrality and authority in the classroom. And again, I can set that tone from day one, but I can also revisit that emphasis again throughout the semester to say, again, does this assignment work for you? Did this course policy mm -hmm. fail? What about my instruction or course design would you like to provide me with feedback on? And I can, again, move through those processes through an annotation series of conversations right. with my students. It doesn't Absolutely. end. The, the one thing yeah. that concerns me always when we decenter the teacher's authority is that there's still power dynamics between the students. So what happens Absolutely. like when one student is more dominant just by their personality or because of their identity? Well, this is when I think it's important, Mahan, I, again, I agree with you completely, to talk about aspects of social presence and to then have some perhaps even more private behind the scenes one-on-one -on -one conversations with students about how their perhaps assumptions about participation in space, their, you know, again, authoring of um, annotation in this case can actually shut down conversation. And so, you know, if it wasn't explicit already and I should certainly make it so, I'm describing an opportunity, I'm describing an activity, I should say, that is private. The annotations that I do with my students are private whether again, I'm using hypothesis on a PDF, I'm using Google comments on a Google doc, or even in a physical classroom space where you've printed out the syllabus and you're literally walking mm -hmm. around with markers, kind of graffiti style, that's all still bound to a shared physical or digital private space. Private within the, all, within the class. Within the, within the class, exactly, within the yeah. class, exactly that class community. And so if then there are power dynamics between individual students, there inevitably will be, I can open up other private spaces or private conversations one-on-one -on -one to discuss with students how their participation, again, may be eliciting or also shutting down other voices and other contributions, which is all to say that one of the provocative questions that I was asked by a colleague a number of years ago was, how do you author an annotation that helps other people listen? And I've really thought about that question a lot because I think it suggests that even the authoring of an annotation is a mark of presence and power. My voice here, my attention here, my mark on this text here. And other people may choose to ignore that. Other people may choose to listen to that. Other people may choose to recognize that they are then listening perhaps to a voice that may not be as powerful or present in other kinds of spaces. And so all of these marks are of course imbued with power and very much the kind of histories that are both individual and shared, particularly as a class progresses over many weeks. And so I've often thought about how the authoring of annotation elicits the opportunity to listen deeper as opposed to only broadcasting opinion. And that's a really challenging 
set of negotiations that I often have to work with as a facilitator of these kinds of, of um, activities. And I often try and model that through my own practices and other annotation activities that I would have in the class. My last question is, um, as a teacher, in terms of listening, do you, do you try to respond in a holistic manner to all the annotations? Like you give them like, I don't know, a day or two or however long to respond, uh, and then you respond um, as a whole to the rest of the whole class? Or do you respond annotation by annotation? It's a mix, it's a mix of all of that. And I think that that's where I have a, my own kind of gut sense of what is, is needed here. So I might read an annotation and I might say, oh, hmm, um, this requires a response from me right away. Maybe it's just a very practical question that I might only be able to answer. And so I need to respond to that right away. I might also see an annotation though that asks a question or posits an opinion or shares a perspective that I want others again to listen to for a little while. I don't want my response to begin to dictate how that comment is received. So I might kind of hold back for a little while. I then might also see um, that some annotations again have uh, kind of thematic similarities they may, for a variety of reasons, be similar. And so then I might take a more kind of global comment back to a series of annotations collectively. It's a great question, though, Maha, because it actually reminds me that in all of the various annotation activities that I bring into my courses, and again, annotating the syllabus, I think, is a very practical, kind of easily understood reason to begin annotation. But of course, I also have students annotate course readings. I have students annotate one another's work and provide peer-to-peer -peer feedback. Um, I have them actually annotate some of my own work so that they can understand kind of where I'm coming from as a professor or as a researcher. So we're doing all kinds of annotation things, but I always emphasize this. Annotation is rough draft writing. It's rough draft thinking. It's not meant to be super polished. It's not meant to be a dissertation. It's not meant to be graded, actually. I do not oh. grade any of my students' annotations ever on anything. I just don't do that. And so then there are other opportunities. There might be a Zoom session that is synchronous because this is happening usually asynchronously. There might be a synchronous Zoom conversation. There might be a, a small group meeting. There might be a more formal writing assignment where I can reference, I can return to, I can actually literally in some cases link to those annotations. Right. But the annotation because the annotation is, is not the end. It's always it's a, a means. means. It's yeah. always a means. It's part of the right. process. It's always a means. Yeah, and so it's a great. means to like, again, that. maybe maybe build community as, as we're saying. This actually here. gives me the idea of, um, in, in my students last semester really liked annotating readings. And I thought instead of doing lots of blog posts and few annotations, they can do lots of annotations and then do a summative blog post after three or four readings yeah. and then they can incorporate both their own and other people's annotations That's it's, it's easier right. for them to read each other's annotations than to read each other's blogs and i was you just gave me this yes. idea right now yes. <laughs> yes and so actually what i'll do and so here's another step in that process so yes i have i have graduate students who will read dozens of articles in the course of a semester and then i actually have them write four kind of reflective pieces that synthesize those readings together they can select how many readings they actually want to synthesize Maybe they resonate with just a few or, or a lot, or maybe only one. And they also can sequence when during the semester they actually want to begin authoring those. So there's a lot of choice in that, in that process. But to author that, the annotations are really the seeds, the seeds of that new garden of thinking. And what I'll do then from maybe week to week or every other week is I'll write my own little summary of the annotations of the readings. So what I'll say is, hey, if you haven't checked out you know, Bali 2018 or 2020 or whatever amazing piece we might be reading by you. Um, did you notice that there's this new annotation thread? Here's what's being discussed. And then I might provide a link to that. Again, I'm in this case using hypothesis where that kind of linking is very easy. And that allows students to say, oh yeah, I haven't checked out that reading in a week or even two. Yeah, there's a new thread there. I'm gonna jump back in. So I can kind of begin to highlight and direct the emerging annotation conversation, students can then use those annotations as, again, seeds for their writing. And then, of course, I'm going to be grading or really providing summative, like, feedback, really, is what it really is. It's more just like, here's how I see your thinking developing. I'm going to really provide my feedback on that writing. I'm certainly not going to be grading the annotations. 
It's my job to facilitate the annotation process and then some of that kind of meaning making so that they can then do the work of really writing up what they're taking away from the class. Right, and you're sort of also modeling it for them, right? Of course, and again, this all, begins, this all begins with the syllabus and this all begins with using the syllabus as a space for rough draft thinking as a space to practice social annotation, to make mistakes annotating. Like, oh, I just added a this or a that. Maybe I could revise or delete that annotation. To do so in a really low stakes way and to model that rough draft thinking with a document that everybody should be reading at the beginning of class, which is the syllabus. And so- Which a lot of model, people don't read. So exactly. <laughs> that's also another, you're doing reading. activity exactly. with it. So people do right. a quiz and I'm like, quiz is not so nice, uh, but this, I love this. This is fun. Yeah. So thank you so I, much, Ramey. Of course. Oh, you're so welcome. You're so welcome. <laughs> okay.